Well, welcome everyone. Good afternoon. This rainy day today, Tuesday. Almost in the middle of the week. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being with us. I'm Vinda Veramayuga, Commissioner of the New York City Department of Consumer and Worker Protection. Thank you for being here and helping making sure that all the vital resources that the city offers, especially the agency, are disseminated and reach our communities. <laughs> Each year, one of those resources that we like to get the word out about is about our tax prep services, our free professional tax prep services. And what this means is that BCWP partners with IRS certified VITA TC volunteer tax preparers. Now VITA is just a TC, those acronyms from the IRS that are specific to this program. It's a volunteer, tax preparers and TC is those that are specific to help the elderly. And so that, just to put it in context in terms of what those words mean. Now, these are preparers that are placed at organizations across the five boroughs and they are there to provide free and professional tax preparation services to thousands of New Yorkers. And if you've heard me talk about this before, you've heard me say that just because it's free doesn't mean that we're compromising on the quality of the services. They're professional, they are trained by the IRS, they really know what they're doing, and they're there to help the most, you know, as many New Yorkers as possible. Just last year, we were able, through the program New York City's Free Tax Press, we were able to help more than 84,000 tax returns get filed. And that means that we help New Yorkers save more than $13 million in tax preparation fees. Three zero. Three zero. One three, one, three, 13. Tax preparation fees are monies that if an individual qualifies for this program, they should just keep that money in their pockets. We're talking about hundreds of dollars and there's, we don't want to see New Yorkers lose out on money that they can keep to you know, help their families. We know that thousands more New Yorkers, even though we filed 84,000 tax returns last year, we know there's just thousand more that are not taking advantage of this program and are eligible. So we wanna make sure that you help us get the word out. Uh, we wanna make sure that these New Yorkers then can access their full refund and are not losing out on any money, especially also, like I said, paying for uh, preparation fees, tax filing fees. We have more than 140 sites around the five boroughs to help individuals file their taxes. And it can be done online, it can be done in person, it can be due dropping off, it can be due virtually. So there are four different ways that we can help individuals file their taxes, whatever works the best for them. The important thing to keep in mind is that to take advantage of the program, you have to make $85,000 or less as a family or $59,000 or less as an individual or a couple without children. Now, also important to know is that the services are available regardless of immigration status. They're available in multiple languages and our tax prep heroes, as we call them, can even help you get an ID. We know that not everybody is eligible for social security number, but even individual, otherwise can get assistance from our tax preparers they otherwise qualify based on the income levels that I shared earlier. We also have our tax preparers who can help individuals get their ITIN so that they can file their taxes and again, save any money on tax preparation fees and access any credits they may be eligible to. Important to keep in mind for those who are not eligible to a social security number is that an ITIN is available for anyone who's been in the U.S. for at least six months in 2023, and they have income they want to report, they need to report, that's really what's going to be the qualifying to obtaining an, an, an ITIN. Six, six, six months. months. Six months. Six months. Thank you. If you are eligible for a social security number through temporary protective status, then that's what you're gonna get. How are you? That's what you're gonna get instead of an ID, right? So but they can certainly have, you know, make the appointment and then we can help them figure out what is it that they would be eligible for and walk them through the steps. Now, earlier we were talking a little bit about 
the work that we do for individuals and families, as you heard me say. However, this year we also launched a full suite of the NYC Free Tax Prep Services for self-employed filers. Now, what does that mean? That means that we're trying to make sure that we're also helping gig workers, freelancers, small business owners who have business expenses of $250,000 or less. Okay, so the same income requirements, 85, 59, and no more than 250,000 $250, in business expenses. Now, this is huge for us. We're really excited because as we know, many people, maybe photographers, maybe writers, whatever it is that they do. Hi, welcome. No worries. Oh, <laughs> we're talking more just talking about um, uh, self-employed. Do you want to say a few words before? You know? No, first, no, yeah. I want, I want to say that this round table is becoming like a, a year event and I'm so happy for this because look, when we are out there in our communities, there's so many people who need these services. Mm -hmm. So, and this is just the beginning. Thank you for being here today. We're gonna continue working with the commissioner to bring this information. Now we are we're launching the campaign and we're gonna continue doing this, but this is one of the trademarks of the administration every year before the taxes. Yep. Thank you. No, thank you. We are just um, had just talked about for individuals and families and I was moving on to talk about the exciting, you know, for self-employed, the services for gig workers, freelancers, all of that, same income requirements and expenses of no more than $250,000. Let's make sure, right, that our smallest businesses are supported in this way so that they can focus on their trade and what they know how to do. The other piece is that not only are we helping these small business owners, freelancers, gig workers file their annual tax return, we are also helping them file their estimated quarterly tax returns. It's really important, it's a really important requirement for uh, self-employed individuals, we want to make sure that we help them comply with that part of their obligations as a business. And we're also offering workshops, we're also offering um, uh, kits with different information and helpful like models and, and things that they can use to help them keep their books in the best way to maximize, again, any, any access to any credits or any support that they may need to not pay any more than they have to as a, as a business. So we really wanna urge everybody to please call 311. They can go to our website, nyc.gov slash tax prep. There is a map of sites on that website. You can also indicate a language preference to get, to see, you know, look for the places that offer the services in that language. And you can also see on the map the ones that offer the services for the self-employed. So those are things, or they help you with an item, item as we discussed earlier. Again, free service doesn't mean we sacrifice quality. We don't want anybody to delay filing their taxes. April 15th is the deadline. Also keep in mind that we know that there are some possible increases to the child tax credit. And so that would increase the refund amount for eligible filers. We hope that we don't want people to delay. This is like still pending in Congress. And so we want to make sure that people are not waiting for that to then go and file. Just make your appointment. Anything that would happen, it will be taken care of at that moment. Or we, you know, the preparers will keep you informed. And I think that's it in terms of the information. No question. Why wait until April 15th? I'm doing my tax at 2.30 today. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> 2.30 p.m. I have my appointment. Yes. <laughs> I'm doing it. Why wait until April 15th? Mm -hmm. Please bring that information to your readers, to your audiences. We always tend to wait until the last week, and that's a mistake that we're making, and some people make. Mm -hmm. And now with all the technology and the services that we're offering, the new city is offering, so this is the moment to take advantage. So the deadline should be March 15th or March 10th. <laughs> Yes, I think that's a really good point also because I think a lot of people say, oh, I don't, I'm looking for my documents. Just make that appointment. Make that appointment. Sometimes I think we need deadlines, right, that will get us to do what we have to do. So just make yeah. sure, please help us get the word out. We want to make sure that your audiences know about the service. They can make that appointment. 
and we have, um, you all have our brochure. It includes information in many languages, and it also includes a list of documents, right, when you open it, at least, you know, like it's just a second page in other languages, of the documents that people should be thinking of bringing with them, okay? And if there's anything else, you can have those discussions. But that's uh, very important. We want people to just, like I said, not wait, just make that appointment, and then gather the documents for you to come in or drop off or virtually, whichever method you wanna you wanna take advantage of. Okay, let's start the Q&A. We're gonna have one question per report. If we have a time, we do a, a second round. Um, we have about less than an hour for the Q&A, so let's start with Queens Latino, uh, Javier Castaño. You mentioned four ways to mm -hmm. file, online, phone, in person, and which one is the other? Uh, so not phone, it's virtual. Correct, it's in person, you, drop the, you can drop them off, Okay. and pick them up, yep. Virtual, which is online, you know, looking at someone, and then assist, what we call assisted self-preparation. You feel comfortable, more or less, but you wanna be able to reach someone with any questions. So it's three or four? Four. In person. In person. Drop off. Drop off. Virtual. Oh, online, yeah, and the other? Assisted self-preparation. Oh, what is the assistance you 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 feel more you feel but you have to be in person no no oh. you just reach the other person um you reach them uh i'm trying to like make sure that we yep no. you just do it through a computer or a tablet or no. virtually to connect with someone but you're not doing the whole return with someone at so the same time so okay. so uploading the file and then get the response not necessarily. You're just gonna connect with the person to make sure that the provider to make sure they can answer your questions as you're preparing your return. So I'm sorry, but my question is how a, a person uh, can get help. So I'm um, at home and I where can I look? If there is a, a, a specific place near my house, yes. I, so I, I, just, I just call it up for an appointment or what? Right. So if you go to nyc.gov/taxprep, there is a map there and you can put your zip code whether it is close to home or close to work or wherever you want to look for the place because we have over 130 sites to close the five for us and there you can check off if you want it in spanish so that only those that are in spanish come up that's what's going to give you the access to the various appointments that are available depending on the location you want to search only by appointment only by appointment easy to that or 311 okay um any any follow up? No, no, that's all right. Okay. 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 Next one it will be uh, weekly Bengali for Shiamet. Hi, Commissioner. Hi, uh, Joseph Jose. Uh, there is uh, first of all I wanted to let you know that as for your information, that I have printed two news uh, on this uh, free tax preparation. Uh, you know, event. That's Thank two you. Two times by ten this year. That's great. What's your question? Do you have a question? No, that I'm going to ask the question. This is okay. you said that. Uh, uh, 84,000 last year, right? Mm -hmm. You are, uh, right? But my question is that why it is not 1 million? Why it is not? Because you are helping the poor people. Mm -hmm. So why it is only 84,000? But it's not half a million or a million. Well, we, <laughs> we continue to get the word out. We definitely know that sometimes individuals have been using a particular tax preparer for many years. They're very comfortable with that person, even if they're paying for the services. It takes you know, it takes, a, a, you wanna you want to change, you gotta trust someone else to do them for you. And it's a barrier that we continue to tackle. These preparers are in community-based organizations, you know, so they are embedded in the community. Um, a lot of them do it as a volunteer program. You know, some staff is paid, but mostly volunteers that are the ones that are trained by the IRS. We just continue getting the word out. I mean, we target, you might have seen ads in the in the bus shelters, in the subways. It's just continuing to get the word out. I mean, we've every, you know, we've been increasing the number of returns that we get at least in the last two years under Mayor Adams, and we're gonna continue to get the word out, especially with your help. Last two words are the same number? 84. No, the year before was less than 84,000. I oh, just don't have the number with it's it. A, a rising. It's been rising, yes. Sunuapri Radio, uh, hi. Yes, uh, thank you, Sir. I mean, this is just great. 
and uh, sometimes all the lives that uh, it could be so so good to be true. So <laughs> the fact that they can get it for free. Mm -hmm. um, now, for those that just walk into the LC, uh, are they eligible to do so? It's just for everyone. It's just what? It's just for like, let's say there's people that just move to New York City. Mm -hmm. Are they eligible to be able to be contacted? If they're residents in New York City, they can contact these providers to get their taxes filed. <laughs> well, let's say they're resident, let's say they're here. Is it, uh, are you talking about asylum seekers? The asylum seekers are eligible, that would, yeah, that, that, that's part of the question. But in general, you know, New York City people are always coming mm -hmm. and moving to New York City. So are they eligible to do it if they, what's the, the term? Like? There's no requirement for how long they have to be in New York City to take advantage of the service. So the residents of New York City. Sorry, but I'm going to tell them, so I know exactly what you said. Yes, yes. And remember, this is about 2023. You're filing for 2023. Yeah. So if they were here, you know, they, they're here now, but they were trying to file their taxes for 2023 and they meet the income levels that we shared, then they should seek out the services. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next one will be Urdu News. Masin Sahir. Uh, yes, uh, I have two questions. <clears throat> Number one is. Uh, uh, do these tax preparers file online too? If somebody wants uh, to file tax online, they do that too? Or they yeah. just, uh, yes? Yeah, they can help them file online with the IRS. With the, if we drop the documents and tell them, uh, file my, my taxes online, they are going to do it online? Yeah, but you got to have the conversation with it. They're not just going to, right? The person is not coming with their taxes prepared. And there might be situations where it cannot be done online for because of an individual situation. So they're going to have that discussion with the tax preparer and if they're eligible to file online, absolutely. Just they'll file the taxes. It's the faster way. It's sort of like having a bank account, right? Like you're gonna get that refund faster as well. Mm -hmm. So they should make the appointment and have the conversation to make sure that they're doing whatever is gonna get them their refund faster. All right, and another question is, Sometimes when you file your taxes and IRS get back to you for some follow up uh, requirements to send us this, send us this. So what uh, is supposed to be done in that case? In, in case, case you of file your taxes. Then? I forgot that. I don't remember if we, is there, if there's an audit. Uh, audit mean? or sometimes they say send us okay. uh, this thing or this thing, you know. You file your taxes and IRS come back to you and say, Send us your uh, this document. Right. Your, what should uh, uh, we do there and then? Yeah, let me get back to you. I can't I'm not to remember off the top of my head if the service continues if there's questions that come from the IRS. Thank you. Next one is Korean radio. Hey. Thank you. And um, I think it is really helpful program for the citizens, but. Uh, you mentioned about the they need to stay here at least six months, right? In 2023. For the item? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they can apply even though they don't have SNS, SSN, mm -hmm. the social security number, right? Correct. So it doesn't matter about their status. Correct. The immigration status doesn't matter for an individual to take advantage of the new city food test. So program. they doesn't need to be a citizen or like a permanent residency? Correct. Okay, thank Correct. you. Next one, Radio Rampa, Monica Damsky. Hello. Hello. Um, thank you very much for hearing this. This is very helpful information. Um, I wanted to ask about the tax preparers mm -hmm. because I know you can apply a volunteer to become one. So uh, is that that's what I read on the website. I just want to ask about specific guidelines for them. Who are those people? How are they qualified? How you check how qualified they are? Because some self-employed people, I mean, these are more complex tax uh, returns. So if you can talk a little bit about that. Um, and also, do you have any statistics about how many people should have filed their tax return and they're not doing it? That's why this is so helpful also. Yeah. Do you have any statistics about that? Because as we know, even people without undocumented people, they still can file tax returns, right? Yes. So could you please talk about these two things? Sure. So in terms of the, the tax preparers, these are organizations that we, some of them we've contracted with and some of them are part of a larger coalition of tax preparers. They are all vetted by the IRS because they are the ones who are training those who are allowed to complete the tax returns. So that's very comfortable, very confident on that piece. 
in terms of, should have taken notes for your second question, stats? Just statistics, like do you know right. how many people should have oh, let me, yes, filed yes. a tax return and they're and not doing it, that's why the program was invented? Absolutely. Like, and let me also cover one more thing, that the sites that provide for self-employed, because you are right, those are more complex returns, those are, it's not all 130 something sites, that's for sure for families and individuals, but the ones that are self, self-employed, there are some select places that they do do those because they have to go through additional uh, training from the IRS. We are the first in the nation to do it with the IRS. They're really looking to us as a model to replicate in other parts of the nation. So you should know, and individuals should know that if that's what you're gonna go take advantage of, those individuals have received specialized trainings to complete those types of tax returns. In terms of stats, I mean, just like there was a question before, million people qualify. Yes, there's millions of people who qualify for the services or are not taking advantage of it. It's very possible that they are filing their taxes but paying someone else. And we want people to like just know that there's this free service professional that they can take advantage of. I can tell you that there is about 800,000 households that qualify for their earned income tax credit in New York City. And they're definitely not all taking advantage of the free tax credit program. And particularly when it comes to the EITC, I mean, you'll say there was a, a campaign that we also did very targeted last year with the mayor because the mayor really advocated and pushed and got the approval from Albany so that the share that New York City matches of the federal earned income tax credit would go up. It used to be 5%, now it's 10 to 30%. And what that means is that I, I can share a, a particular example that we have in terms of families. When that went up, what that means as an example is that a single parent with one child with an income of $14,750 saw the benefit increase from 187 to 933. That's a 400% increase. And a family of two children and an income of $25,000, Southern New York City benefit increased from $308 to $925 under the city payment. That's a 200% increase. So you're absolutely right that I don't have the exact stats, but there are millions of households that we actually wish would take advantage of the program. And if they don't do it and they have a tax for they'd rather pay, you know, at least make sure that they are maximizing the access to the earning income tax rate, especially as it got enhanced on the menu items. You're welcome. Next one is China Press. Thank you for your information. I just want to confirm with the uh, multi-language services because like right before Mary Adams uh, announced this program, uh, I think on the uh, 23rd last month, and you mentioned about there will be like uh, four language access, uh, and I think it's in Yeah, no, we definitely have uh, a lot of languages and even the ones, um, I think I have a list here, I'm not sure to find it, but even our providers who might not have staff uh, that master certain languages, they still have access to language line. If somebody needs to come in and need uh, services in another language that they might not have the staff, uh, the staff person uh, there at the moment. Yeah, I don't have the list right here of, of what the <laughs> providers uh, cover, but it's, it's a good number of languages, and definitely, you know, again, language line is something that all, all of our providers have access to and are comfortable using as well. So, um, I assume like you can just call uh, 301 and ask for the like, being protected if they want to use it, right? They will be directed to the people first. When you call 311 for tax, what we need the person to say is tax prep. That's it. Just say the phrase tax prep. And that's what's going to direct them to the right place to then find out in whatever language we need to communicate with the individual to make sure that they get an appointment if they prefer to make the appointment through the phone call in 311. If not, they can go to the website and then they'll be able to see it in the language that they prefer. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Okay. Next one is the Vision Times, Martin Time. How are you? Uh, my name is Martin. Uh, I, I use, uh, basically, I use a uh, uh, very limited tax for my filing uh, uh, of my tax. So uh, during this time, uh, I think it's very easy to use a very tax and it's a very easy I finished uh, the file, so I, <laughs> I need to uh, 
Right, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I understand. You were saying before that you use a free online service? Yes. Not yeah. our. Yeah, um, online, yeah. But not our service. Oh, no, no, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, because <coughs> we don't do, it's not a uh, software that we're putting out there. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about is free services with a professional that you're sitting down with or you're communicating in some way virtually, not something that you're doing on your own, because even the assisted self-prepare, right, you're still gonna be in touch with someone, a live person. And so I just wanna make sure that if you're having issues with uh, some service, you should be careful. I don't know what service it is, but certainly you should be careful, and we actually have you know, more information in the pamphlet. We also have a uh, bill of rights for you know, that tax preparers who charge you money have to give you, and sometimes when somebody says free, it's not always fully free, because sometimes they say it's free for the federal tax return, but doesn't include the state tax return and all those things, so you want to be careful about that. So if you qualify for this service, then I would just suggest that you make an appointment in yourself and try to uh, do them this way. The question from your daughter seems to be a tax law question, right? I, I don't know tax law. But if your daughter is in New York, then I would suggest that she also make an appointment if she qualifies to get the assistance, the professional assistance that can help her figure out those uh, requirements that may be on her. The next one is DDN24. Uh, Hassan Kurin. Since we have over 130 sites across the city, they will vary. They are, again, embedded in the community, so they'll know best their community. Some are open on the weekends, some are open after hours. Our countries still have different requirements, making sure that they are available to individuals at various times. So it's not necessarily just like a nine to five thing, Monday through Friday. Some of them are open on the weekends, and some of them are open after the usual work day. Once I'll leave a lot of newspaper. Angie? Yeah, hi. Just my question, maybe. Uh, my Related? Friend, yeah, she asked about the languages. So when I am looking for a certain, uh, like, volunteer who knows, like, language, I could, should call 311 or Wikimedia with the website 
or how would like you know? You could do it either way. I'm saying you can if you go to the website, it'll give you the options to search by a language. Mm -hmm. If you want to search directly that way, if you call three one one, it'll just be the same, but you'll be doing it through a person who's speaking with you. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Next one is weekly dunya. Thank you very much. Uh, your DCD, DCWP uh, saved, I believe, the thirteen million dollars uh, from to New York of New Yorkers. But what about those companies, uh, those who are filing tax uh, tax on behalf of people like general mm -hmm. people in the public? So, uh, do you think are you discouraging them, or do you think they charge uh, much fees, or what should be the fees as well? And when you say the whole fund, so. It means that you guys, your department is paying all fund and the rest of the com companies, those who are filing tax for people, they are not paying the uh, whole fund. And uh, you are addressing ethnic media as well. Uh, so your department, BCWP, is always advertising, was advertising for the ethnic media. So you are sending messages to us. So what about the ad swallower that she was spending to the ethnic media as well? Sure. So for anybody who pays uh, someone else to do their taxes, we do monitor them. We do visits with our enforcement teams to make sure that they're following the consumer protection laws that are in place. So that promises aren't being made or shouldn't be made, disclosures are made. There is um, a bill of rights that is required as well that has to be given when you go see uh, pay tax repair, they have to give you these bill of rights. It's pretty lengthy. There's a lot of rights that people have, people might not realize that they have. And you, if anybody, perhaps they don't qualify for this service that we're offering, and they're gonna go pay someone else to do their taxes, they need to be given, as the very first thing needs to happen, you need to be given this consumer bill of rights. So that is one way in which we monitor other companies private companies that are offering the service. It's legal to provide the service. I'm not saying they don't use other services. I'm saying why spend hundreds of dollars and a paid tax preparer if you can get a professional service of high quality for free. It's more money in the pocket. It's obviously targeting individuals of a certain income level that I am sure, you know, we know the median uh, amount of money people pay is over $300 to get taxes prepared. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. So that's what we're doing in terms of the enforcement. In terms of a media campaign on the outlet, absolutely, I mean, you're right. We definitely are targeting and we wanna make sure that all of our New Yorkers and the communities that you reach are aware of these services. We do encourage you, if you haven't sent it already to our press office, press at dcwp.nyc.gov, please send your kids, your media kids, we do target where we want to go. We do a lot of research to find out where are the individuals and the families who can most benefit from the program, and that's what we're going to be looking into. But absolutely, you know, please, if you haven't sent it to us, send it to us, and then we'll have the vendor that we're working with to reach out to make sure that we can move forward with those. Okay, we had the first round, so anybody has additional questions, we can go for a few more questions. Um, yeah. yeah, Commissioner, what about the in-case audit? Are you going to ask for the audit? That's, that's what I was referring to before, that I want to get back to you because I'm, I'm unclear if we do the audit uh, mm -hmm. as well. No, right. But I should, sorry, but I, I should say though, I mean, once you visit one of these sites, the relationship is built. <laughs> like, we have a lot of people that are just keep going back because you just proven that you're there for me. So I don't, I, I'm gonna check because I can remember if that's part of, of the whole service. But these are community-based organizations that are also going to, if they're not the ones they're gonna be doing, they're gonna be sure, right? I mean, they're gonna be helping their community members get connected the right way. We don't wanna see anybody do more. I can tell you that the opposite has happened where we had individ, an individual, we had a number of individuals, I just know one in particular, whose mother used a pay tax preparer in the community because it was just somebody that she trusted. That came out with a balance, some, like amount of money over $1,000 to pay in taxes. When that, the daughter of, of that uh, tax filer went to one of our sites, I think it was Bed, uh, Bedford Stuyvesant Restoration, 
uh, center in Brooklyn, they went there and when they met with that tax preparer that's through our program, they instead ended up with a refund. And so the opposite has happened in terms of, I mean, I think, sure, I can't guarantee that IRS will not audit, but I'm also quite confident about the tax preparers that we use because they are authorized or trained by the IRS precisely to make sure that they're just getting it right from the get-go and there's no questions that come after. Not prevent, not, not, like a, not a guarantee that they wouldn't come, but it's a uh, And small businesses who are required to file quarterly taxes, can you shed some more light on this one? They should be in touch quarterly with you guys? Yes, that is the new service that we're offering where it's not only the annual tax return, for the quarterly estimated taxes that those self-employed New Yorkers have to file as well. Okay. Sure. Sorry. Thank you very much again. Uh, again, you uh, when you say whole refund, so some people complain that they don't be uh, refunded whole by the IRS. So, uh, and sometimes IRS they do charge some penalty, like that even they're giving back to the refund that they send you a lot of money that you have to pay, like a common person has to pay. What to do in this case? Um, I mean, I again, I don't know that that's been the experience of individuals using our service. It's are you asking just in general? For, this, for a whole refund, but when you say whole refund by the NYC prep by DCWP, what do you mean by this? I mean, you want to maximize the amount of money that you're getting back. So, other those who are uh, filing tax on behalf of common general public, they are not refunding all. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I hope they're doing what they're supposed to knowledge. do. No, I, I mean, it, it's just, I can't, I don't control, I don't know how they train those individuals, right? I mean, the people that they're employing to file taxes for, those who either don't qualify for our program or people just still want to pay someone else because of whatever reason is who they've built a relationship with and trust. I know that oftentimes what happens is that you go to a paid tax preparer and they'll offer you what is called a refund anticipation loan. That is going to lower the amount of a refund that you get because that is what it is. It is taking away money from your refund so that that particular provider is giving you part of your refund before the IRS gives it to you. It takes approximately 21 days for the refund to arrive once you file your taxes. Assuming you have a bank account and a use in direct deposit, it will take longer if it's a paper check that they're sending to you. So that is one way in which you will not get your full refund if you are trying to take a refund anticipation loan. They are covered in this Consumer Bill of Rights regarding tax repairs as well. There might be other reasons, but I just... Thank you. Just tell you that 100% confident, just if, you, if you're qualified for the services you use it, you're in good hands. Thank you. I think it's important to clarify that BCWP and the city is responsible for our program. Right. <laughs> Whatever happened outside the program, um, that is why we're asking everybody to come and use mm -hmm. the program, right? Yeah, Coach, I think this is just great. Uh, and uh, as he asked the question, uh, I don't see what reason why people would go and pay for money if yeah. they know, that, you know, and they're gonna have the same services, right? Like they can get next day. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I mean, this is it's like, and, and, and hearing you saying that right now, you also gonna say how you get, you do an advertisement on the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a certain way in the bus. They need me to help you. Mm -hmm. They will look at it on the bus, on the truck, they just look at it, I feel like that's not there. So we are talking about it, I'm sure they're going to write about it, they will go on and say, uh, because this is important, this is our piece of pie for what we do, as we do So I will talk about it on my show, and some people that cannot afford to pay $300 or more, mm -hmm. they still will charge more than $300. Mm -hmm. Because if you need next day or whatever, you'll be paying more money. So I'm sure that like, people would love to, you know, come to, but it, like you, you just said the deadline is April 15th. Yes. So it may be a short term. Most of the most of the people probably already. So why could we maybe next year have it way earlier? But on top of that, see how we can have the advertisement. So talking about it is not enough. But to run that, I, I know the city is going through whatever because of the situation we're going through. But I, I'm just saying the, the fact that. Uh, 
is on the subway and it's on the bus. Believe me, so of all people, you just look at it as a lab, it's not a bus. I understand. Yeah, and I can I can add to that question because I've been involved in the my office has been involved in the advertising. So as you know, um, all the budget situation, the budget crisis that we have had in the last few months, um, most of the advertising campaigns were suspended. Now we are going back into doing advertising, small advertising campaigns mm -hmm. again. So yes, <laughs> all of you you know have heard that it's something here and there, and. It took for OMB, the, you know, the Office of Management, to take those approvals. That is why we wish, we, I discussed with ECWP, I was asking since last year, I said, you know, it's, it's, it was the mayor, you know, it's a mayoral directive that we needed to wait until the mayor lifted the OTPS and that happened two weeks ago. That is why we are starting now. We're gonna do our best to get before April 15 to get there. Thank you. Like I said, this is too good to be true. Yeah. I'm not saying here, I'm saying, this is true. <laughs> so I'm not saying here, I'm saying, this is true. I'm not saying here, I'm saying, this is true. In their language, then they yes. will believe it. 